What if I told you that the way that you've been thinking about saturation has been making your images look worse? Okay, well that's a fairly subjective thing to say, but if you're trying to aim for a more filmic way to do saturation, I'm gonna show you the method that I use that I think works out really well using just the tools that you have inside of Resolve. And I think you'll agree with me by the end of the video that maybe this is a better way to do saturation. Now, usually when you think of deep, rich colors, most people will cite film or film emulation as the more pleasing way to think about colors, how it emulates colors and how it represents colors. Film, however, works a little bit different to reproduce colors than the standard tools you have available to you inside of your video editor. Now, I'll show you why that actually matters as we go throughout the video and I'll show you how it looks. But first, let's cover saturation and how it actually works. And then I'll show you what the tools that are available to you by default do and then how we can change that and make it better. So saturation, we could say, generally describes how intense a color is. The higher the saturation, the higher the color intensity. Now, of course, saturation makes a really big difference in your images, and there's multiple ways to do saturation. There's even some looks that go after a completely desaturated kind of look. But when I think about saturation and when I think about colors in general, my goal is to achieve a rich, deep color palette that translates on the screen as well. So let's jump into Resolve. I have an image here that I'm gonna be using to show you both methods of saturation and how it works and how it looks different. So number one, we're gonna cover the saturation slider. This is a fairly simple one because this is how, how everyone really starts out in Resolve. So far, I haven't done anything to the image that you're seeing other than set up color management, which you'll need to do for every project. I have a few videos on color management on the channel, but it's probably worth revisiting as it's an important subject, but that's for a future video. I'll also put my prior videos in the description below so you can watch those after this video. Right now, I have it set up in nodes here, so we're normalizing the image into Rec. 709, which will be our output color space and what my monitor can actually reproduce. So now if I create a new node in the middle and then go to the saturation knob, I'm gonna almost max it out here so that you can see what actually happens. Not because this is ideal or what I do, but just to prove a point. If we take a look at our scopes, you can see the signal is increasing in our waveform. If I actually pop the scopes out and do vector scope as well so you can see it with between the two scopes, you can see that the colors are getting more saturated as the signal moves out. Along with that, we can actually confirm just by using our eyes and looking at the image that the parts are indeed getting more saturated and they also seem to be getting brighter. Even in the scopes on the waveform, you can see the lowest part of the signal going up in certain colors. That's because digital color and also most sensors that are available in prosumer like mirrorless cameras, for example, use an RGB color space, which is an additive color model. Digital camera sensors like the ones in prosumer cameras are sensitive to light, and inside the sensor you have photosites that are sensitive to the red, green, and blue spectrum of light. Those photosites become exposed to light, and as they pick up a variety of information from the environment, including how much red, how much green, and how much blue there is out there, it blends together on the sensor, and eventually you get the representative color when it's interpreted by your editor. Also, the reason you know and why we call it an additive color model is because if you combine all three wavelengths, red, green, and blue, you get pure white. So you're adding together all the co those colors on the spectrum to produce pure white light. Now, if you want to work in a subtractive color space, we have to look at another color model, which is known as CMYK. Now, you may have heard of this color model before, but it's an acronym which stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and key which in this case represents black. This model, for example, is commonly used in print media, such as magazines and newspapers, where a combination of the cyan, magenta, and yellow ink combine to absorb light from a particular spectrum to then reproduce a color that we can see. Now, it's known as subtractive color because essentially what you're doing is you're eliminating wavelengths of light as they pass through or get absorbed by a specific ink or film, for example, until you end up with an output color. Now, when all the colors of CMY converge, theoretically, you get black. If you block out all the cyan, magenta, and yellow light, only black remains, which means you've blocked out the spectrum of light. Now, one of the many reasons this might end up being a more pleasing color model to use, especially in color grading, is because it's closer to how the real world works. For example, if you have an object that seems more saturated in color to us, theoretically, it should be absorbing more of a particular spectrum of light, which means that it's technically appearing darker 
as it gets more and more saturated. As I mentioned too, this is also the way that traditional film stocks handle light as well. If you look at a breakdown of film layers, you'll actually see that there's a cyan, magenta, and yellow emulsion layer that blocks these colors out as it hits the film. And then when you're looking at film stills, you'll see that when a color becomes more saturated, it usually becomes a lot darker as well. So how can we replicate that in Resolve? This is method two that I'll show you, which is using the HSV node. The easiest way which I usually use is to make a separate node in your tree. So I'll go ahead and reset this first one. So right now it's not doing anything. We still just have our color management here for this image. Now, if you right click right on your node and go down to where it says color space, I'm going to assign a new color space just to this node. Essentially, what you're telling Resolve to do is treat this one node in the chain as a different color space. Once you leave this node and go to your next one, you'll be back to your timeline color or whatever you have set up in your color management. So for this node, if I right click on it once again and go down to color space, I'm gonna select HSV. HSV has three properties, hue, which is your color, saturation, which is what we wanna deal with, and value, which for now we'll just say is sort of equivalent to luminosity. It's a little bit different practically, but we won't be dealing with it right now. Now, if we right click again here, we really only wanna target saturation, like I said. I don't really wanna be messing with the hue or the value of something. I just wanna isolate the saturation channel. So what we can do is we can go down here again to channels, and I'm gonna turn off channels one and three of HSV. That way we're just left with channel two, for S or saturation. So this is our basic setup. Now we can use our lift gamma gain wheels and play around. They're all gonna have a little bit of a slightly different effect on the image because of how these tools normally work. For the purposes of this video, I'll say I actually like using gamma personally, but I always play around with all of the tools just to see what will get me the best result. Gamma moves the values around between zero and one, but will preserve zero, which is the floor of our signal, and one, which is the top before blowing out. So essentially nothing blows out or gets crushed, It'll apply saturation in a much smoother way and will apply saturation less, I guess we'll say, to areas that are already saturated. That way you don't end up with any results that are kind of funny looking. But like I said, play around with it to see what will give you your intended effect on an image. Most people that I've seen use this technique jump in and use the gain knob and that works just as well. Ultimately, play around with different methods and look at your scopes and the actual image to see if you're hitting your intended result. If you look on the scopes now, if I use the gamma wheel and pull up on it, the image is becoming more saturated. It's also giving me the effect of intensifying the colors. They look like they're getting darker and more rich. One last thing which I'll throw in there is kind of a bonus is that now since we're on this node that's sort of in a different color space on this HSV color, but we're only affecting the saturation, we can do some interesting things as well. Like for example, there's really nothing stopping you from going in here and drawing your own custom saturation curve on the custom curves tool. Now, I wouldn't personally recommend starting out like that or really dealing with most of your images in this way because it certainly makes shot matching and translating these changes over to other shots infinitely harder. But if there's something very specific that you wanna accomplish on one shot, you have the option to do that. All right, so that's where I'll leave it for this video. If you're looking for an easier way to get film-like saturation, this is sort of the easiest method that I've seen to be able to reproduce this effect in Resolve. Now, of course, there are a variety of different methods that people have out there to achieve the same effect. I've even seen a whole bunch of plugins available with sliders that will let you do the same thing and work in a subtractive color space. This is just the easiest method that I've found to get similar results to what we're looking for, which is that film-like saturation with just the default tools that are offered to you in Resolve. So go around and experiment with this technique in your projects and let me know what you think of the results. Are they good? Do you like it? Is this a better way to do saturation for you? Also, if you learned something and you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button down below and the like button as well, just to get this video out to more people. That would certainly help me out. I also just want to extend a really big thank you to everybody that's subscribed recently. There's been quite a jump in views and subscriber numbers as well. So I'm really happy about that. The channel finally hit 2000 subscribers, which I think is awesome. And I really appreciate everyone that stuck with me and subscribed and watched my videos and shared them and liked them and commented and done everything else. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for sticking around. I promise there's more to come. Hopefully this channel grows and I can get more content out there, but I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be at 2,000 subscribers already and it's still growing, so I guess I must be doing something right. But thanks to all of you, I really appreciate it. And until next time, go out there and create something. La de Federe.
into the stars. Oh, you and I, we're royalty. You and I, we 